Look, I've been collecting magic books for a long time, since maybe the late 90s, and I've spent a ton of money over these years. Frankly, I was a little surprised by how much I'd spent, and I'm going to share that with you later in the episode. But for right now, I want to share three different ways that you can save on magic books. Up until this episode, I hadn't actually added up how much I'd spent. Sure, I'd kept track occasionally, but I had to really dig back into the archives to share with you, my erudite magic viewers, how much I have personally spent on magic books life to date. The first tip that I have for you is that you should buy for less. What do I mean by that? Well, what I'm saying is you don't always have to jump on a book immediately when it's published and buy it brand new at full retail value. Instead, there are a couple of ways that you can save. The first way to save, and I want to be completely candid about it, is with my sponsor, Don's Magic and Books. If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know that Don is a great friend and a tremendous sponsor for this channel because he pairs exactly what we all want books. And he does it at great prices. I dare you to find a more reputable dealer than Don online who offers better prices on magic books. And if you don't know, the reason that I love pairing with Don is because he cares as much about putting magic books in your hands as I do about telling you about them. But seriously, if you haven't, you need to visit his website, Don's Magic and Books. Dot com. And if Don's prices aren't low enough for you already, he is offering you, my viewers, a discount by using the code SAVE at checkout. So I will put that down in the comments below, as well as a link to his website where you can shop for all of your books for 10% off by applying the code SAVE at checkout. I was going to tell you a story later in the episode, but what the heck, I might as well tell you the story now. You'll go through seasons when you're buying books where you're buying books on mentalism or card tricks or coin magic, something that you're really into at the moment, and then later you're going to decide, I'm not really into this anymore. When that happens, you'll be tempted to sell what you already have in order to get what you don't have. I made this mistake early on. I decided that I wasn't going to use everything that I had on my shelf, a book like The Secrets of Brother John. Hammond. When I got out of card magic, I ended up selling it to someone. Fast forward to where I am presently, and I really wanted the book back on my shelf. However, it was unfortunately out of print. So what did I do? I hopped onto donsmagicandbooks.com, and lo and behold, Don had just gotten in a used copy of The Secrets of Brother John Hammond. Not only did he have it in stock, but he also had it at an incredible deal, which was basically equivalent to the original price that I bought it, even though books like this have been going for multiples of that original asking price. So it's definitely worth it from my own personal experience for you to go over to Don's and check out what he has in inventory. Okay, so now that you know I personally shop at Don's, I also wanna tell you some of the other places that I shop to save on magic books, especially when buying used books. One of the places that I go to now to look for books are the Facebook selling groups. There are quite a few groups that you can be a member of. I'm pulling up some of them here. For sure, there's Surplus Magic Exchange. You have Magic Book Swap and Sell, Magicians Magic Books Only, and I'm sure that you have some local groups like Ohio Magicians or South Carolina Magicians or wherever it is that you happen to live. You can find magicians in your state or locally that are willing to part with things. Here's a hint though, when you're shopping on the Facebook groups, you need to act quickly. So I'm getting to another point, which is you need to know the market values of the books that you're looking to buy. My recommendation is that you keep a list of all of the books that you want in a prioritized order, as well as the best price that you've seen one sold for and what it cost new. This will help you know right away if you find a book that has a great value. I'll mention it in passing, but the Magic Cafe is also a decent place to look because there aren't as many people on there as there used to be. So sometimes you can find a pretty good deal if someone posts down in the Magic Books for Sale or Trade. I used to score quite a few good deals on there. I know I bought Paramiracles at a reasonable price, as well as Coin Magic and some other Richard Kaufman books that someone was parting with. I got them all for a really reasonable deal just by watching and being one of the first to comment 
that I was interested there on the Magic Cafe. So I throw that out there. However, participate in the Magic Cafe at your own risk. Another underrepresented place to buy magic books is actually eBay. I don't know that it's always the best place to buy them because people sometimes list them for ridiculously exorbitant amounts, but I have had some decent success on there, particularly because you can set up search criteria and then the eBay system will alert you whenever a book or a title that you have put into search before pops up. The one thing that I found very useful on eBay, and this is kind of a pretty good secret, I think, is to help you find what a reasonable price is for magic books. I've seen so many people post a listing for a magic book on say one of these Facebook groups or the Magic Cafe, and they suggest, I saw a book going for $1,000 on eBay. Well, when you actually look at it, it was a listing for $1,000, but no one bid on it because the book is not anywhere near worth that. But what you can do is click on completed listings to see what books actually sold for on eBay. And that's one of the main benefits that I've used it for, especially during negotiations to help sellers understand the actual value of what it is they're trying to sell. Okay, so tip number one is to buy for less. Tip number two is to do your research. So before you decide what to buy, almost nothing is worse than wasting your money on a product that you won't use or a book that you don't like. What I recommend is that you watch plenty of reviews. And I might humbly suggest that this be one of the first places you check for honest, clear reviews on what you might like. And humble too. Now the implication in what I'm saying is that you're not going to buy the book as soon as it comes out. You're going to have to count to 10 and wait just a little bit for people like me, Magic Orthodoxy, Real Magic Reviews, or somebody else out there to read through the book get through the material, and then report back to you with their thoughts and the contents. While I'm at it, I'll tell you that I don't like being put under high pressure sales tactics like this book is going to sell out or a limited printing. Of course, everything is limited because nothing is ever out there forever. But that's part of this tip as well. Avoid the hype machine as much as possible and try to use the rational side of your brain and not the one that just gets excited to plunk down the money whenever they see something new. I know it's tempting when you get some money for Christmas or any kind of other bonus that you'll wanna run out and buy something with it, but it's always so much better if you can determine what is going to fill a hole in your library or what is an author that you really like and you want to see more of their work. But part of this doing your own research is also knowing yourself and understanding, as I mentioned before, that you may go through some seasons, so be prepared to buy what you're interested in and know the authors and the types of books that will be useful to you and don't just buy because it's the latest thing that got put in front of you by a shiny email with a really cool ad copy. Finally, I'll suggest to you have some discipline. And what I mean by that is I have spent a lot of money on books, but I have done it over a very long period of time. If you know me, you know that I'm a fairly frugal person and that I live on a pretty tight budget. So for me, I set aside money each month to make sure that I have enough to buy a book, say, every other month. Or as your income grows, you may be able to set aside more for each month to buy a book each month. The temptation is to do what Erasmus did, which is whenever I have any money, I buy books. If I have any money left over, I buy food and clothing. While that sounds like an exciting way to live, I assure you that in the long run, it really won't be all that beneficial to you. Be sure to stay disciplined, know what your budgets, your limits are, and then plan to spend that money each month so that you can kind of satiate your appetite. I find that if I buy a book a month or every other month, that gives me enough time to actually read through the material that I'm obtaining so that I can digest it and decide if I like it and how I might implement it in my own work. The other part of this being disciplined is don't spend more on a book than it's worth. So this goes back to the point that I made about eBay and other places to find out how much did that book go for and you can start to see a pattern over time so you know and you keep this list of what a book is worth and if it falls below that price, you know how much of a deal this is because in the heat of the moment, it's really easy to overspend and so to me, it's critical that you know how much you should be spending on this book or how much you can spend. Because remember, no book has that one secret that's going to put you over the top. 
You are the secret sauce and you already have enough magic in your library, most likely that you could perform many lifetimes of magic. So don't get hung up on thinking you need that one book to get you there. The real secret is to reinvest in yourself with the magic you do know by performing it, practicing it, honing it, and turning it into a story that you can share with others and that's a reflection of your own character and values. Okay, so at the beginning of the video, I alluded to the fact that I have spent a lot of money and I am still in shock when I finally added up exactly how much I have spent on magic books life to date. Most of this shopping happened from 2010 through 2021 and there was a definite ramp up as my income and excitement over books grew. And while I don't regret buying any of these magic books, I will tell you that the number was really shocking to me. Because you're erudite magicians and I know you can handle it, I'm going to share it here with you. For the period from 2010 through 2021, as close as I can figure it, I spent over $11,000 on magic books. I know that sounds like a lot of cash and frankly it is, but I've actually used all of the strategies that I'm telling you about in this video to ensure that I've saved as much as possible when buying these books. And it's basically over a period of 132 months, which means that I have spent about $83 a month on magic books. It is a lot, but it's not as crazy as it seems. So with all that said, I hope that these tips are helpful to help you save as we go into this holiday season or whenever you happen to find yourself watching this video. If you want to know how to get the most out of your library when you've spent money on it, check out this video. And if you want to see someone who has definitely spent more than me because he has a library of over 9,000 books, then check out this video. As always, my friends, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, keep reading.